Well, let's look at John 10 this morning, verse 1. Just, uh, you know, we're not done with the other series that we've started, but this is, uh, you know, just had something uh, on my heart specific this morning, so can't really do anything else than what you have from the Lord. You can get up here and say all kinds of things, but if it's not anointed, then we're just wasting our time. So, you know, we endeavor to, to seek Him on what we would share. So let's look at John 1. John, excuse me, John 10, verse 1. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He said, He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Aren't you glad he knows your name? Amen. Knows a whole lot more than your name. You know, some people might know your name. That's about it. You might not know your name, just say you. Hey, you. May know your name, may know where you live. You know, there's a lot of people that know your name and where you live, and you never met them, and you don't want them to know, but they know because it's all out you know, in the ether now, you know, people can send you all kinds of stuff in the mail. They don't know you. They may know your name. God knows our name, but he knows us. Amen. Like when we were praying, you know, before this, he, he, knows, he knows where you were yesterday and the day before he saw you, saw me. Whole, your, your whole life, my whole life, he's seen every part, good, bad, and the ugly. And he loves us. Amen. He wants good for us. He's a good Heavenly Father, good God. He knows us. He knows everything about us. He wants good for us. Verse 3, To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 4, And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. Praise God. So much here. He goes before you. Everybody say, He goes before me. Say it again. He goes before me. The good shepherd, He goes before us. That means where, you, where you're walking now, when we're looking to Him, he, He's out there going before us. Goes before them, and the sheep follow Him, for they know His voice. Everybody say, I know His voice, and I follow Him. I follow the Lord. He leads me. Verse 5, Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. They will by no means follow a stranger, but they'll, what? they'll flee, they'll go away from the stranger. They do not know the voice of strangers. They do know the voice of their shepherd. Let's skip to verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Come back to that, but I wanted to, you know, I want us to see the context this verse sits in. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd and who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. 
That's talking about most of us in here. If you're what, what is a non-Jewish person by birth, this is talking about us. He's talking to Jewish people. And he says, I have other sheep that I'm going to have to bring in, and there'll be one flock and one shepherd. That's what we're living in now. But at that point, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross. He was talking to Jewish people and saying, there's other people. In other words, all the other people, they're going to come in, and there's going to be one flock and one shepherd. And that's the, way, that's, that's the, the age we live in now. There is the Lord, and then everybody that comes uh, to the Father God through Jesus. Verse 17, there, Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. The command I have received, this command I have received from my Father. So we're going to go back and read some of this again. But this is such a rich passage. There's so much here. But it gives us a picture. Jesus is saying, you know, I'm, I am the good shepherd. I'm the one that lays my life down for the sheep. He said, my sheep, they know my voice. They follow me. He said, the shepherd goes out before his sheep. The, the shepherd takes care of his sheep. He said they don't follow the voice of a stranger. You know, the sheep don't listen to another voice. You know, animals are like that. We have, we don't have sheep. We have a couple of birds in our household. There are a couple, we have two conures, which are like little parrots. One's a real bright orange and yellow one, and then the other one is mostly green, and, uh, you know, but has some other colors, blue and some yellow and some gray. They're beautiful. But, you know, um, they know our voice. When we come in, uh, you know, as soon as they hear a door open, they'll start squawking. What they're doing is they're it's called a contact call. And they're, they're, they're saying, basically, are you there? And they expect you to say, hey, hey, Yoshi, hey, Finn, we're home. And then they'll squawk back. Now, if they hear voices they don't recognize or that they recognize, but, you know, uh, they, they're not sure about, then they act different. You know, we had um, Thanksgiving, and, and uh, Shelly's mom, Rebecca, came over, and Daniel, uh, her, her husband. And um, the thing is, Rebecca, sometimes when we go out of town, she's the one that looks after the birds. So sometimes when she comes around, the birds are thinking, uh-oh, are they leaving? And they shut up and they get quiet. So for the first part, when she, they came over on Thursday, they were just quiet. They're like, what's going on? You guys getting ready to go someplace? Something you haven't told us? Something we need to know? And so they're quiet. They know our voice and they know that voice. They, they like her all right, but they just, they just associate that with, you come... They go, sometimes. We know that. And then you're gone for a while. And evidently, you know, that's enough to get into the little, little bird brains, and they, they understand that. But, you know, you, we have a stranger in the house, like somebody, we have a contractor or something, and they just shut up. They're like, what's going on? They don't, they don't recognize that voice whatsoever. They're just, okay, I still hear the voices I recognize, so I'm good, but I don't recognize that voice. Well... That's what he's talking about. The sheep, the sheep are with the shepherd all the time. Um, they know the voice of the shepherd, and they say they won't follow. They're just not going to follow some stranger. If the stranger goes, hey, come here, they're going to be like, well, wait a minute. You're not the shepherd. I don't know who you are. I'm staying. If he moves, I'll move. You, I don't know who you are. Right? That's what Jesus is talking about. Jesus uh, is our, here, here he says of himself, he's our good shepherd. Uh, in other places, he's our great shepherd. He's the, the chief shepherd. And he is the only way to the Father, and he watches over us. God the Father watches over us. Let's look back at... Um, let's look back at verse 7 and, and, and read. We'll go up to verse 10 here. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Now, he talked earlier, 
he said, the one that doesn't come into the sheepfold by some other way, he's a thief and a robber. Here he says, everybody that's come before me, they're thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. He said these thieves, the ones that are coming, they're not coming for any reason but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Other, other verses say that, or other versions of that verse say that he came to have a, for us to have a rich, or his sheep, which we are, to have a rich and satisfying life, life to the full, till it overflows. So he said, the thief, which the devil is a thief, he is the thief, he is the adversary, it says he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus came so that we would have life and have it more abundantly, have a rich and satisfying life, have life to the full till it overflows. Let's go down, let's look at Psalm 23. I'm just going to read some scripture and then we're going to keep moving here and say some things, but I just want you to see these. Psalm 23, such a good, good psalm. Now this is, this psalm, you know, some, some psalms and many psalms are prophetic. Uh, and this one is prophetic. It's talking about where we are now. There, there's psalm uh, that talk about Jesus. Verse, or psalm 22 is talking about the Messiah. Verse 20, this 23 is talking about where we live now. There's other psalms that talk about the future. This is talking about us now walking in the earth. So you can apply this to your uh, life now. Jesus is our shepherd. We saw that, Jesus saying that of himself in John. Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Giving us a picture of the Lord as our shepherd. Well, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I've come so that my sheep may have life and have it more abundantly. This is saying the same thing. Talking about where we are now, Jesus is our Lord, the shepherd. Our Father God is the good God, our good Father. Verse 1, let's go back. Verse 1, go through some of these verses, just touch on them. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, he said in John, I, I, I am the good shepherd. I lead my sheep, they follow me. Well, what's the shepherd doing? He's taking care of the sheep. He's walking, they follow him, they know his voice, they follow him where he goes, they're following, and they're getting all their needs taken care of because the shepherd's going to make sure of that. Here it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means if I'm following him, just following his voice, going after him, I'm not going to want. He may, he's going to make sure of it because he's the shepherd. We're the sheep. We don't have to figure everything out, we just have to follow the shepherd. It says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. That means he leads us where we have everything we need. Leads me besides the still waters where we can get a drink. Leads me in green pastures where we have everything we need to eat, everything we need to survive and to thrive. 
abundance, he said. I, I've come that you have life and have it abundant. Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Notice that. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I walk through something that's difficult, that's pressing, that could be fearful, he says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Who's with me? The shepherd. That's one of the shepherd's jobs is protection. That's what Jesus was saying. The thief, the one that's trying to come in and, and do harm, he comes to steal, kill, destroy. But I've come that you may have life. See, he's saying, I'm coming to protect you and take care of you. Somebody that comes in with ill intentions, I'm going to protect you from that. Just follow me. He said, I, I will fear, yea, though I, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. Everybody say comfort. That's the Lord. He's the one that comforts us. We see him, we say, he's got this. Well, that makes us be at rest. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, there's still stuff going on. Enemies are there. Trials and, and pressures are there. But you, it says that you, you prepare a table anyway. For me, in the presence of those things, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Does that sound abundance? That sounds like being taken care of. That's the good shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because I'm walking with the good shepherd. I'm walking with him. There is security in knowing that God loves us and that the reason Jesus came was so that we would have everything we need, so that we would be protected, so that we would be taken care of. He said, I came so that they would have life and that they would have it more abundantly. The psalmist said here, David said, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, there is security in that, knowing God the Father is our Father. Jesus came so we could have access to the Father and so that we could have everything we need. That's why He came. He just said it. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come so that you have everything that you need. I am your source. I'm your shepherd. I mean, for the sheep, the, the shepherd's the source. There's stuff there's the things that are needed here, but the shepherd's the one that guides them and gets them what they need. Shepherd's not, he doesn't create the, um, the vegetation and stuff, he, but he makes sure the, the uh, sheep have everything they need, and he knows what they need, and, you know, the sheep don't know. As smart as we like to think we are sometimes, we, we don't know the future. You don't know the future. I don't know the future. Yeah, we know what God will reveal to us, but you're going to walk by faith. If we're going to walk in this, this life following God, we're going to have to, to trust Him and walk by faith. You don't know all the steps, and you know sometimes people get ahead and they, they want to tell you they know everything. So many times uh, we, he, God reveals certain things to us, but we don't know everything. We're going to have to walk by faith. We're going to have to walk by His Word. Continually. And there, there are things that, uh, there are uncertainties in this world, there are pressures in this world, but one thing we can know, we know the Father God, we know the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, uh, and if we're, we, He is here, and He's in us if we know Him, and we can lean into that, and know that God is there for us, that there is nothing to fear, even in the uncertainty, even in pressures, that He is our shepherd, 
and that He has our good in mind. The reason Jesus came was so that we'd have what we need, and so we need to lean into that, relax into that, trust Him even when things look uncertain. Trust Him when there are pressures. Don't fear. There is nothing to fear. This verse, verse uh, John 10.10, 10, back in, in that verse, it makes it really clear what is God and what is the devil. It said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that we would have life and have it more abundantly. So anything that steals, kills, destroys, anything that brings doubt and discouragement, Anything that would take away, that's of the devil. But anything that builds up, that moves forward, that's God. That, that is peace and calm. Go back to verse, uh, 20, Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, when we are secure in Him, we're not going to fear. Fear is a result of not knowing, not feeling, not focusing on the fact that He is our shepherd, he, that God is our Father, that Jesus is the good shepherd, and that He is there. Fear is the result of looking at something else. Here it says, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. He didn't, he, he didn't say anything about the other stuff. He said, yeah, that's there, but I'll fear no evil because you're with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, there's stuff that will push, but because I know you, I won't fear. There's no reason to fear. Look at 2 Timothy 1.7. Lay our, our eyes on this. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is not from Him. Now I know that that seems can seem really obvious, but John in, in John it made it really clear that there's things of the devil and there's things of God. Fear in any form is not from God. And don't let this be too simple this morning. God, God is our shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. Everything that we need is in Him. And as we look to Him, He's going to provide everything we need. So right there you can stop and say, okay, well, why would I fear anything? You wouldn't. Then we just read in, in Psalm 23, I won't fear. Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear. Why? Because He's with me. I trust Him. His rod and staff, they comfort me. Here we're reading in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear, He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So here's another really clear verse. God has not given us a spirit of fear, so we don't want any of that in any form. That's not of God. And he said, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So that is of God. So fear in any form, any fear, is not God. Is not anything that we want to have anything to do with. We don't want to give it a place in our life because fear involves torment. Look at 1 John 4.18. It says, there is no fear in love. See, if you know God loves you and you know that you're secure in Him, you know He's your shepherd, see, there's no fear in that. That drives it away because, no, no I can relax Psalm 23 is this picture of peace because he's with me, because he's for me, because he's taking care of me. Well, then there's no fear there. It's just tranquility, so fear has gone. See, it says there's no fear in love. Well, God is love. So you see, again, fear has no place for the Christian, has no place in our life, any. But perfect love does what? 
It casts out fear. It throws it out because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect or mature or complete in love. There is no fear in love. Perfect or complete love pushes fear out. Fear is tormenting. And if there's fear there, then we're not resting in Him. Fear is of the devil. Fear will torment a person. It doesn't matter what the fear is. We need to know if it's fear, I don't want to be led by it at all. It's, if, it's, if it's devilish, if it's torment, I don't want to make decisions based on fear. Any decisions based on fear. If we recognize fear in our lives, then we, we need to, as soon as we become aware of it, say, wait a minute, that is not going to make my decisions for me. I need to start focusing on the right things and be grounded and established in the right things so that I am following the good shepherd, not being pushed by a fear. Being led in fear in any form is giving Satan a place in our lives. Now, he'll try to wrap it up and make it look different and act like it's not fear. But if it's fear, he has a foothold and he has a place where he can start leading us. Any form of fear. Afraid, people could, you could say, afraid of what the devil is doing. Anytime we start getting afraid of the devil, well, we're afraid. We, so this is happening, so I'm going to do this. Well, but if I'm doing it because the devil's doing something, I am making a decision based on fear, not, because, not based on the Lord. We could be afraid of losing our health. We could be afraid of losing a job. We could be afraid of persecution. We could be afraid of being rejected. You could be afraid of not finding a spouse. Could be afraid of not right, marrying the right person. Just don't know. Might have options, but I'm not sure, and so afraid. Could be afraid for our children. Could be afraid for our parents. Could be afraid of not having enough. Could be afraid of doing the wrong thing. Don't want to make a decision. Don't want, it, it, it can't make a decision because I'm afraid I might make the wrong decision all the time. Afraid of not doing enough. All these involve torment. You can be tormented over, and it's a fear. What if? What if? I don't know. I, what if? I, what if this? What if? That's all fear, and it's all torment. You can be afraid of doing too much. What if I'm not doing enough? But uh, what if I'm doing too much? Because then, then this, and then that. Afraid of losing friends, or friendships, or relationships. Afraid of not being good enough. Insert here. Good enough what? Good enough spouse. Afraid of not being a good enough parent. Well, what if I don't do this and then I don't do this? What if my kid, and then my kid, you know, they're not going to have an... Uh... Afraid of not being a good enough employee. Afraid, not, afraid of not being a good enough manager or boss or leader. Did that cover anybody yet? Fall in any category? Afraid of not being a good enough Christian. Well, if I'm just not doing that, you know, I'm not doing it as well as I should. Well, I can, I can 
save you some time. You're not doing it as well as you could. None of us are. Did that hurt somebody's feelings there? So of what's possible, none of us is doing it perfect. Put it that way. Just flush that right now. It doesn't mean you go out and try to do wrong, but you can be tormented over and over because you're just not doing enough. That's not God. <laughs> He's the good shepherd. You're not supposed to be tormented by being afraid all the time. The world is afraid. You ever notice things are driven by fear? Got another cycle ramping up right now. Got to watch being driven by fear. Use your head, but don't be afraid. If you're driven by fear, it's not God. You can't make decisions based on fear. Fear is torment. The Bible says fear is torment. And the devil will try to convince you because he wraps it up in different packages that, well, you're just, you know, you're just concerned. You're, you're just acting rational. Look at it. Is it actually afraid? Well, I'm not going to do this because I really think this is the best option. Is it fear? Is it because I'm, I'm afraid of something? I'm afraid of something happening, really, when I look at it. And so I'm going to do this. If we do something because we're afraid, we've already given the devil access to push us over here. Rather than, Lord, what would you have me to do? Notice in Psalms, he said, look at it. Let's, let's look back at Psalm um, verse, 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let me ask you something. If you're walking through, notice it goes through. You're not camping there. But I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, there is the shadow of death there. There are heavy things going on. Would you be tempted to feel some things? Yes, you would. But you don't have to yield to it. Here it says, I won't feel any evil. I won't fear any evil. In other words, there's pressure, but I'm not going to yield to it. Just because there are things around me doesn't mean I have to fear them. For you are with me. It says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, saying, I, I might be in the middle of some heavy stuff. My enemies are set there or around me, but you set a table in the midst of it, and then you anoint my head with oil. You cause goodness and mercy to follow me. I'm going on in spite of this. See, that's not led by fear. That's saying there's stuff here. I'm being led by God. Amen? See, that's not, that's not being pushed by fear. If we start getting pressed or concerned and make decisions based on really trying to avoid something, let the Holy Spirit show you if it's fear. You say, well, I don't, well, it's just obvious. It's not always obvious because if it was obvious, people would run from it. Sometimes it's subtle. You don't realize that it's there. It's actually, it, if you were completely at peace and, re and really believed, or a person, I should say, not you, a, an individual, were completely at peace knowing God is my source, the Lord is my shepherd, that I shall not want that He came, Jesus came, so that I would have life more abundantly. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If I was convinced of that, and knew that no matter what, He's taking care of me. There's a peace there. There's a comfort there. Now, I'm going to make decisions based on just what He said, not on, well, this is here so. See, if I get into that, then am I really in that place of peace? Is there fear that's masqueraded as something else that's actually pressing on me and pushing me? And God will make, He'll quicken that. He'll show it, wait a minute, this is fear. Stop yielding to that. Don't go, go, don't go that way. Go forward. Where he's leading. Because where he leads us is in green pastures. Where he leads us, we have everything we need. See, what the devil tried to do 
is scare you to go where he wants you to go. You know, it's like an animal in a trap. There's a trap over here. And you scare them so that they'll run into the trap. That's not the same as, I don't care if there's a trap there, I'm just walking forward so that animals don't have that much intelligence. We're likened to a sheep. We don't need to act just like a sheep in this regard. We do know the Word of God, and we need to know, wait a minute, here's what you need to know. We're a sheep in a lot of ways, but we can know. I need to keep, I mean, in this regard, be as smart as a sheep. I need to keep my eyes on the shepherd. If he ain't moving, I'm not moving. If he's, if he's going forward, I don't care if it looks like there's something there or something's trying to push me. What is he doing? What is he telling me to do? Is he getting all excited? Is he, is he afraid? Is, is this, it, 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 would Jesus be concerned about certain things? If it's pressing on me, it's a good question to ask yourself, well, what would Jesus do? Sometimes that'll just peel off the wrapper and say, oh, wait a minute, this is just vanilla fear. This isn't anything, see, the devil will say this is complicated. He likes complicated. He likes gray areas, because then it makes it hard to discern what to do. It makes it hard to discern what's really going on. But sometimes you just peel things back and you realize, well, this is just the devil. This is just fear. This is just trying to push me. And so we want to be aware of that. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. If we know Him and we're secure in Him and press into Him and we're made perfect in His love, then fear is gone. Look at uh, John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, Peace I leave with you, my peace. Jesus is saying this. I'm giving it to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he's telling us right here, don't be troubled, don't be afraid, don't let it happen, which means we have some control over it. But what, how does that happen? Because you could get this real, well, just, just get in there, do, do it, stop it. Well, that can be unhelpful. You know, you ever told somebody that's really afraid, just stop being afraid. Just like that, when they're already in a, a it's easy. Does that help? Not necessarily when they're in that state. They have to understand something. Just tell them, stop it, that's it, without having something to back it. You know, have you ever, you ever seen somebody get, getting excited, and then somebody else is like, calm down. Is that, what is it? The guy's ramping it up. Would you calm down? <laughs> That's just going to ramp it up. We need to know something. We need to focus on something else. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. So we can do it. We have the ability to do it. You can't say, oh, I just can't help it. That's not true. We know that's not true, right? On the other hand, how do you get there? Because it can feel like I can't. Fear can grip you to the degree that you feel like, I, I don't know how to stop. I don't know how to, to get. It, it, is try, it is gripping me. I don't know how to get. I hear what you're saying. I don't, understand, I don't know what, how, to, how to make that happen. But we can. The Word says we can. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. How does that happen? What are we going to do? We know... God has provided everything we need. We know Jesus is our good shepherd. He's the one that leads us. He leads us in green pastures. He's come to give us everything. 
So fear will try to push on us. What do we need to do in order to push that fear out? Well, we're going to need to focus on what God said. We're going to be more convinced of what He said than the thing that's trying to push on us, that fear. You know, the psalmist said, I will fear no evil for you're with me. See, he's looking at, you're with me. He could look at the the situation, but he's saying, I'm going to look at you. You're with me. And that's what calmed him. Look at Psalm 1, verse 1. Everything okay? Look like we just had a blip. So is the the video still on? Still streaming? Okay, so just give us a second. We'll get the, the screen still up or get back up. Praise God. Just stay in, just stay hooked up, attitude of worship. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll go to Psalm 1. Well, that was quick. Good job. Psalm 1, verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the un- ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his delight, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its, the, its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Go back to verse 1. Notice it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Well, the ungodly would be a conduit for information and pressure. We said that there's an enemy, there are enemies, there are pressures. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to fear. Don't listen to things that are against the word of God. Nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Don't let things that are against the word of God get a foothold in our thinking. Don't listen to them because that can produce the fear. What we focus on is going to be what determines what we experience. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law or in his word, you could say, where we are living now with the New Testament and with the whole of the Bible, in his law or in his word, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. See, I'm not looking, I'm not listening to things that would tell me the wrong way to look at it. I'm looking at what the Lord says. I'm just going to focus on what He said. I'm going to focus on He's my shepherd. I'm going to focus on him being my source. I'm going to focus on him being my protection. I'm going to focus on him being my health. I'm going to focus on him being the one I look to for wisdom and direction and guidance. He is going to lead me. See, there might be there's pressures and somebody says something or you hear some report or there's some other piece of information that'll try to bring in. The, the psalmist said, there is stuff around in the midst of that, that you make my table, that you set my table, that in the midst of it, I still don't have to fear. Why? Because you're with me. How am I going to, how am I going to have that peace? I'm going to have to look at something beside the things that are against God in whatever form they come. See, fear will try to creep in and just sit there. 
and push in, we have to make the decision to push it out. You push it, you resist it, and one way you're resisting it is you're going to look at the right thing, which is going to give you the ability to resist it, and the more you look at the right thing, the smaller this becomes to where you just say, yeah, get out. Yeah. See, it's a, it's a feedback loop, loop up. If, you, if we stay there and go, I don't know, I'm bound, I can't see, and, and you see the word that says stop it, and you're like, I don't know, I, I can't stop it, I'm trying to stop it, and just stop, stop it, and you're just going like that. Instead, you have to cut that off and say, Lord, you are my source. Lord, you are my shepherd. See, now, right, at, right there, faith is rising. And now you start, you push that, you, you take your eyes off something and look on something else, which is what God said. Now you can resist, and you're saying, no, leave. But if you just stay and go, leave, 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 but you're not looking at God, you're just doing that in your own strength. You're trying to get it, and you're trying to break it in a mental realm instead of enacting the spiritual realm, which God's word is spiritual. It will crack through your thinking. By reading it, by saying it, you have to stop the cycle in your head just by, by doing it. It will break that. You'll look at the Word, the power of the Holy Spirit, and God's Word will come in and give you strength and bring you up to where you are seeing clearly so you can resist. And as you look at the right thing, fear will dissipate. You're looking at God saying, He's with me, and this other thing is like, well, so... That means we're looking at the right thing. Right. See, you're not trying to resist in your own strength, which is futile, and the devil knows that. And he'll say, well, who are you? And you're looking at the situation, and you don't see. It's this big, and you just see it, and it's so, so close you can't see anything. But as you start to look at God's Word, this thing goes down, and, and so that you get faith to when you look back of it, you can see right and say, what, this thing? And you can just walk right over it. God's word is living and powerful when, as we're just reading these words, looking at he's our shepherd, looking that Jesus came to have everything we need. Faith rises in our hearts. That's what happens when you look at the word of God. The Holy Spirit's job is to help that happen for us to see clearly. And now the situation looks totally different and we can walk in what was ours to walk in the whole time. Philippians 4, verse 6, let's read through this briefly, just so you can see this in context of what we're talking about. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. See, be anxious for nothing. Again, if you just take that, be anxious. Well, I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to. Do it in light of working with God and His Word. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, that means going to God, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God then, which surpasses all understanding, see it bypasses your mind, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So they'll set up a guard there, so where now where you were fearful, now you're not fearful anymore because you're looking to Him and you're able to resist. Look at verse 8, which I wanted to tie this to what we read in Psalms. Finally, brethren, whatever, where, where, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That's how we do what he just said. You don't be anxious. What are you going to do if you're not going to be anxious? If you keep looking at the thing or keep dwelling on the wrong input, you're going to be anxious. But if you start looking at what he said, he just described the word of God and everything godly in verse 8. If we meditate or think about those things, now it sets up a guard around us so that we are in peace. So fear dissipates. So we're able to see clearly so we can walk out God's plan. We can resist what we need to resist. We can be bold where we need to be bold. We can stand where we need to stand. But fear is not leading us. Peace is. The Lord is leading us. Might lead you just to come right up against something that other people would run and get from. And you're leading and you're going right by it. But you're not afraid. 
If you're going by fear, you'd run away, but you're walking right by it because you're being led by him and you're focused on the right thing. Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Where's our focus? On him. Not on what I can do, on him and what he's able to do in me and through me because he's my shepherd, there's my focus. Now, then the word says, he'll keep me in peace, which, which goes right along with that will guard our hearts and our minds. There's peace there. Strength there. Calm there. When we're walking with him, there's calm and peace and fear is cast out. Has no place. Everybody say, has no place. place. Say, fear has no place place. in me. me. Praise God. 